everybody, this is Noelle from Petites, and we are at a lovely home, and we are gonna show you all these options for a low light indoor house plants. Check all the different colorful foliage and texture options here. Now, you're gonna say, Noelle, there's, there's not a lot of flowering. No, there's not. Low light conditions are actually, um, you know, we have a lot of them in our homes, just depending on, you know, how many windows you have and what type of trees and shading from the outside uh, coming in as well. So low light options are, are really something that we need. There's really not a lot of light energy to get them to bloom. And I'm gonna start out telling you that uh, the peace lily or the spathophyllum is probably the, the best bloomer out of the bunch, if you will. But this one even could take low light, no problem. But if you really want to get it to go into bloom, you might wanna increase the light level a bit. So let's talk about these low light plants. Um, what you really need to know is, is what are we talking about? Low light conditions. And so um, actually we're, we have a north side of the house here and north side, the north side is actually bright indirect lighting, okay? So that's for plants that have a lot of colorful foliage, uh, flowering, those types of things. They like that bright north side, but it's never direct sunlight on them. So you never get the burning, but you get a lot of great light coming in through the windows. And again, those windows have to be unobstructed. So you're getting bright indirect light through that north side. Well, what we wanna do with low light plants is we're gonna start bringing them back away from that bright indirect lighting condition. And so as you move five to six feet away, that's kind of medium indirect lighting. And as you move even further away, now eight to 10 feet away, you are in a lower light condition, okay? Um, another way that you can look at this is you can literally open a book and if you can just barely read, like you're just barely comfortable reading that book, that's a good indication that that's a low light condition. So we see it a lot in hallways, um, sometimes entryways, just depending on how many side lights or how many windows your door has. Um, we'll see it in darker rooms, rooms that don't have any windows in them. So um, again, that's what you're looking at, those low light conditions. And I should mention as well that fluorescent lighting or plant lighting, absolutely you can put those in these rooms um, to give them a little bit more light, but again, you don't need a lot and these plants are very conditioned for those lower light levels. So that's what you need to keep in mind. With all of these, there's so many beautiful colors and varieties out there and it seems like every year there's more and more. So let me just start out by saying we, we touched on the spathophyllum or the peace lily here. And this is a, a beautiful plant, green leaf variety white flowering or spath flower there. And then there's also a variegated variety and this is called Domino. And Domino has this light kind of white paint splash all over the foliage. Looks very, very similar to the green variety. Just the foliage has a little bit of a ruffle to it that splashing on it. It does bloom. I will say that this one takes a little bit more time and patience to get them to bloom. This one down in front, this is Enjoy. This is a philodendron, okay? And Enjoy is actually the variety. Beautiful thick white margins. Sometimes you get some modeling, but again, it's gonna be a nice trailer for you in those lower light levels. Again, could that go into medium light level? Absolutely. And you'll maintain a little bit more color in that, just as well as this domino uh, piece lily. It will maintain a little bit more color if you put it into a little bit more light in those conditions. Chinese evergreen family. There's three right here, right in front of me. They have become very unusual, very unique just over the last several years. Um, I have uh, Siam pink here, which is a beautiful light pink variegated, has some uh, nice pinky stems to it. I have green papaya in the back. It has kind of a chartreuse green color to it and sort of red midrib uh, vein running right down the center of the leaf. And then this one's called Wishes. And this is one of the 
deep pink kind of redder varieties that you see out there. And again, you're thinking, okay, are these gonna work in low light? Absolutely. And they do do well in low light, but if you see any fading of color, give it a little vacation and more of that medium indirect light, and you'll start to see the color return for them, okay? This one back here, this fluffy one is a parlor palm. It's called Bella, Neanth Bella Palm. You've probably seen these before. This is a great little palm. Uh, they really don't grow too big for us. Wonderful house plant that we can use inside. And um, actually out of this whole family, this is gonna be your best pet friendly low light plant that we have throughout here. So this one, if you have a lot of pets around, you're worried about them, you know, eating and browsing on your house plants, try the Neanth Bella Palm. It's really, really great for low light. You think most palms would want to be in hot tropical areas. This one can tolerate that low light condition can tolerate medium light condition and can actually tolerate a little bit more bright light, but good low light option. In front, we love the, the uh, Sansevieria or the snake plant. So you see La Rubia here, beautiful dark middle, and then it's got the yellow striping on the outside. I love it. It's kind of a compact variety. They stay a little bit shorter. They don't get really, really tall like the standard classic snake plants. Really, really great. And this one's Moonshine, and Moonshine has that beautiful silver cast on its foliage. And Moonshine, again, a little bit more of like that compact to medium-sized Sansevieria. So they're, they're nice, a little bit different, not that classic uh, typical upright, straight upright plant, but really, really nice. And, and again, just really one of the easiest low light house plants to grow. And Sansevieria being succulent can also move into those higher light categories. Uh, they really do very well in a lot of different areas, but obviously a great option for low light. ZZ plant back here. This one's called Supernova. I'm gonna lift it up really quick here. We've got some very dark foliage developing on this. This is kind of a, I don't know if it's a sport of Raven, if you've ever heard of Raven, but Raven was the first dark leaf variety that we've come across. Um, Supernova is kind of an offshoot of that where it's a little bit more compact and you can tell the foliage is a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact grower. So really pretty dark foliage developing on Supernova. But again, awesome uh, low light plant. And they really don't like to be in, in too much sun. So you do not have to expose these guys to more light at all. Keep them in those low light conditions they will be phenomenal. And then I have two Diefenbachia here, and they have a terrible common name. It's called Dumb Cane, um, I, and I don't appreciate that at all. Um, so the Diefenbachia are, are really a great houseplant, very easy to care for, a little bit more upright growth, you can tell, but you have Camille here, which is a classic, beautiful plant. And this one that's really light and speckled is called Camouflage. So lots of families that you can grow in low light levels, no problem. And to add on to that light condition, when you expose plants to lower light levels, that also means they don't use as much water in the long run. So when you're watering, we always talk about with house plants, when you're watering, the best thing you can do is take them over to the kitchen sink, go ahead and remove them out of their decorative pots or what have you. If they're planted in a pot, that's okay. I hope it's planted in a pot with a, a drainage holes and a saucer, okay? But when you water them, you are thoroughly moistening the substrate, okay? Letting the water drip out through the drainage holes. And if it goes into the saucer, that's fine. And then you wait until that, you stop watering, and you wait until that dripping or that running out of the drainage hole stops, okay? And then you go ahead and you repeat your irrigation. So you go ahead and water another time, fully moistening that, that soil substrate. And then again, letting it drip out. And as soon as you see it start running out the bottom, then you stop again, okay? You take that plant, put it back in its pot, go ahead and put it back in its place. And of course, that's harder for larger plants, so you totally get it. That's why it's good to have those drip saucers underneath there so you can see what's happening and you don't have to move the plant. And then go ahead and wait until the soil gets dry to the touch. And we usually talk about taking your finger and going down about an inch or two top right down into the soil, okay? So sticking your finger in, 
going down to about your second knuckle, and then going ahead and feeling the top. And really what you're looking for, or picking the plant up, and what you're really looking for is a, a drier feeling plant before you even consider trying to rewater. The peace lily, the peace lily will start to wilt ever so slightly when they're ready to be watered again, and you go ahead and thoroughly water them, and they'll pop right back up. Kind of the same thing with the philodendron or the pothos, same thing. They'll just slightly wilt when they're dry. You touch the soil, make sure that they're feeling dry for you, or lift the pot and then go ahead, thoroughly rewater, they'll pop back, okay? Uh, lots of houseplants will do that for you, but it's really, really good to kind of keep them on that even moisture to slightly dry condition, because that's a lot easier to correct than something that's a little bit overwatered, gets root rotted, they start to wilt because they're overwatered now in the opposite condition, and that's really, really hard to correct. Um, other than that, I think with Again, with your plants, your house plants, remember to use good drained, draining soil. So your potting mixes that have good soil aeration and conditions. So good draining soil, good drainage holes in the bottom of your pot. Saucers, okay. Um, any saucers, you can place your pots on top of a humidity tray if you want to. So that's a saucer with pebbles and that water can run right into there. And then it will help as it evaporates, it will help keep a humid condition around your plant. So that's always great too. Always avoid the air vents. Um, you know, hot and cold vents, okay, even in the winter when we're heating and we have that hot air circulating, try to avoid, keep your plants away from those. In the summer, when the air conditioning's on, keep them away from those cold vents as well, and they'll be very, very happy. When you are fertilizing, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, fertilization with houseplants really only occurs during the growing season. And again, low light plants do not need a lot of fertilizer. So you're really just applying fertilizer kind of March, April, all the way until let's say September, October. And then you don't fertilize at all over the winter months, okay? So make sure you look at your bottle of, let's say Osmocote, the pink cap, is great for foliage plants, house plants like this. Usually Osmocote, pink cap, it'll last six months inside. If you apply it to your house plants, that's all you need. You usually need one application and you're ready to go. Okay. So keep that in mind. Enjoy all of your low light house plants.